the staff that works here doesn't care about the kids. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe Embriano. I'm coming to you outside of Troy High School in Fullerton, California to report on the latest developments that are taking place at this school. This school, as we've reported, is a prison induction complex that has microwave weaponry installed in it. This school has sheet metal walls. This school has pink fluorescent lighting. And this school has deployed ruckus access points, microwave transmitters that are designed to power up to 500 devices per classroom. This is a scientific kill grid, ladies and gentlemen. This is a place where these students are being sterilized by microwave emissions. In 1974, the United States government commissioned many studies on the effects of microwave emissions on tissues, cells, organs, and various parts of the human body as well as animals. One of the most significant reports that has been produced and obtained to date is one that was conducted by the Defense Intelligence Agency and it was a study on non-thermal non -thermal power levels of microwave radiation in the frequency band that is being deployed in these classrooms. What was observed was very startling, folks. We have actual proof from the United States government scientific studies that morphological changes to subcellular components such as the mitochondria and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of cells were reported after exposure to non-thermal power levels of microwave radio frequency emissions and those emissions power levels are the same frequency and power levels of those deployed in these classrooms. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on at Troy High School is a weapons deployment. The children at Troy High School are suffering from microwave sickness right now. I want to go into what's going on here. There's a couple reasons for the fall of Troy High School. The Troy High School rankings are dropping like a brick. You know, it's I don't know if any of you know the group Led Zeppelin. It's a famous rock group from the 70s. And, you know, they, they, they had uh, tried to get some albums, to you know, some producers to sign them back in the day. And nobody wanted to produce them. They went to a producer in England, record producer, and they said, oh, you guys are going to drop like a, like a lead balloon. And that's where they got the name Led Zeppelin, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let me tell you something, folks. Troy High School is dropping like a lead balloon. Their rankings are dropping, and let me tell you why. And Troy High School has deployed high-powered microwave systems in all these classrooms. They have put in ruckus access points that are designed to run 500 devices in each classroom. And ladies and gentlemen, these classrooms have metal walls. There's an epidemic of insomnia. There's an epidemic of Adderall abuse. There's an ep epidemic of drug abuse. There's an epidemic of depression. There's an epidemic of class failure. Children are failing their classes. They're losing their minds in this place. We have administrators that are mentally abusing the, the, the students. We have children that are being abused by their teachers. There's all kinds of psychological warfare being conducted on these children in terms of what they're being taught, the worldview they're being taught, and how they're being publicly humiliated in front of other students. We have teachers that show up late for work and abuse the attendance. We have all kinds of abuses taking place at this school, ladies and gentlemen. But the worst thing of all is the child abuse that's taking place here at the hands of these administrators. We have all these children failing, once again, to recap, because of the iPad deployment in the elementary schools that are feeding this school. The technology programs at the lower grades, starting in kindergarten all the way to eighth grade, with the iPad deployment has destroyed the critical thinking skills of our children. The microwave exposure at a young age, including home exposure is destroying the cognitive function and these children's ability to heal and sleep and think and develop. All of these weapon systems that have been deployed, the fruit of the labor of very evil people like Dr. Robert Pletka and the Fullerton School District Board of Trustees, Chris Thompson, Hilda Sugarman, Beverly Berryman, Lynn Thorny, Jeanette Vasquez, and uh, 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 Janny Meyer and Hilda Sugarman have literally ruined an entire generation of children, folks. And what's happening is they come into high school, they're all flunking out. And right now the whole freshman class is in deep trouble. It's so bad here at Troy High School that usually had the brightest and the best coming from everywhere that now they've got to allow these kids to make up homework. And they actually had several emergency meetings with the parents to get a handle on the disastrous fall of the freshman class. And here we are, five years after my colleagues and I have warned that this would come. We attended many meetings, folks, and, and a good colleague of mine, Ms. Diane Hickey, had done tremendous research on the screen time issue and screen addiction and what the screens do to children. And then uh, we've also had plenty of 
information disseminated at these board meetings about the dangers of the microwave radiation, what that would do. This was a, a dangerous situation, and they doubled down and deployed all this in a school that has metal walls, folks. You don't put microwaves inside metal walls unless you plan on cooking something, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's exactly what they did here. They got metal walls in here, and they put the systems in. So now the kids are all failing. The kids are depressed. The kids are medicated. They're doping up on weed and oxys and Adderall and alcohol. And there's all kinds of problems here, folks. There's a whole bunch of kids in this school that want to kill themselves. There's children crying in the halls in this school. Their children breaking down in the halls. You got teachers making references and making fun of these kids about how they're going to be in the same seat the next year in front of the class. It's happening, folks. These children are being mentally abused and physically abused by the system. And the system is being run by Will Minster and Scott Scumbray. Okay? Scott Scumbray is our superintendent of the Fullerton Joint Union High School District. And Mr. Scumbray came in here uh, about two years ago after G. Harris had left and put the wireless systems everywhere because the board adopted it. And once again, Robert Singer, the father of the microwave soldier, Robert Singer, PhD, 30-year board member, is now officially the father of the microwave child. Mr. Singer, you are now officially the father of the microwave child, sir, as well, the as, well as the father of the microwave soldier. That is your legacy, Mr. Singer. My friends and I, my colleagues and I, have lobbied and spoken to the school district officials, school boards, and everybody pertinent to making decisions for what goes on in these classrooms for years, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you what we did. We told them not to bring these wireless devices into these classrooms. We told them not to put these microwave systems in these classrooms. We told them not to deploy microwave systems in these classrooms with metal walls. We told them not to do this stuff. We told them it sterilizes children. We told them it causes all kinds of problems with learning, with cognitive function, with behavior, with memory, with sleep, with heart rhythms, with all kinds of health problems. And what did they do? They did it anyway. Bob Singer is a school board member who happens to be an electrical engineer. And in my opinion, Bob Singer belongs in prison. Because Bob Singer is the one on the school board that's been here for decades, that has been to every single meeting that I spoke at over the past five years. And it takes every hand and every foot on half of a classroom's body to count how many meetings I spoke at. And I presented written, documented, scientific information to Bob Singer. And Bob Singer has ignored it all. And he of everyone should know what microwaves do because Bob Singer, the Fullerton Joint Union High School District trustee, is the father of the microwave soldier. Not only is he the father of the microwave child, ladies and gentlemen, but he's also the father of the microwave soldier. He holds a patent, I believe, or created a patent, that is being held by some defense contractor that was the parent of microwave communications and tracking of soldiers. He's the father of the microwave student and the microwave soldier, ladies and gentlemen. So let's hear it for Bob Singer. If you have any questions on how to contact Bob Singer, you can go to the Fullerton Joint Union High School District's website and you can see his picture there. He's an elderly gentleman. He's been on this school board for decades and he is single-handedly responsible for the destruction of the health of these children along with his other counterparts. But he is the most guilty because he is the one with the most knowledge and he is the one that has ignored the most information. So it is deployed. Microwave weaponry is deployed in this school. That is affecting the cognitive function of these students. That is affecting their critical thinking skills. We have an epidemic at Troy High School of insomnia. Chronic insomnia is a direct result of chronic microwave exposure. Chronic microwave exposure results in insomnia, arrhythmia, all kinds of blood irregularities, fertility issues, behavioral issues, cognitive function, all kinds of problems. It is the last thing you want to bring into a school. This school, if you'll notice, if you look at this facility, it's a prison, folks. And it's highly, it's highly guarded by police. It's got a gate. It's got no trespassing signs, and those people in the office are the ones that need to go to prison for what they've done to these children. Now, let's talk about the facts here, folks. Once again, the freshman class is failing. The majority of the freshman class at this school is failing their grades. The junior class, in a large percentage, is failing. We have the fruits of the labor of the district staff that has irradiated these kids and rolled Common Core in here as they remain silent on what was being done at the elementary level that we tried to stop for years, folks. And they sat back 
and they drank their diet joke and got drunk on the weekends and had their little happy parties and they ignored everything we said and now this place is falling apart with kids that want to kill themselves in it. This place is a hellhole, ladies and gentlemen. Troy High School is a hellhole. Troy High School is a dangerous place for students. Troy High School is a school where at least two times in a row there were two concerted efforts to shoot up this school according to the threats that were deemed credible by the Fullerton Police Department. The Fullerton Police Department had two situations a year apart where there were credible threats to harm staff and students here. And why is that? Because these students can't take it. Because what they're being pushed through by these radical leftist wackos, that all they care about is the rankings of this school. All they care about is the test scores. When they don't want to take into consideration what is being done to the children before they get here? They're being destroyed in the Fullerton School District with the iPads. The iPads are a waste of hundreds of millions of dollars. They're sterilizing the children with dangerous microwave radiation. You can go to apple666.org and look that up. Now, we got a drug problem at Troy High School, a big one, because inside the walls of this prison system is an Adderall epidemic and a marijuana epidemic and a Oxycontin epidemic. The biggest drug of choice on this campus is Adderall. Why is not Mr. Monster, the school district principal, and the assistant principal, I don't know what their name is, why aren't they drug testing for Adderall at this place? Why? Why is the school on cocaine? Because that's basically what it is. It's a stimulant, folks. Adderall is like methamphetamine or cocaine. It's a stimulant. This school is drugged up, it's irradiated, and it's breaking, and it's depressed. And you got kids who want to kill themselves here. And if you talk to the seniors, they can't wait to get out of here. Let me tell you something, folks. When I was in high school, I loved high school. It was fun. Learning was fun. We had incandescent lights and clear windows and textbooks and teachers that loved us and cared about us with chalkboards. You know what we got here? A bunch of liberal psychopaths that have sat back and let these students get pushed to the brink and microwaved and vaccinated and brainwashed and broken. And all they care about is when their next raise and when their next day off is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the definition of evil. Troy High School is an evil place. Troy High School needs to be closed down. Now, we have people in these schools, specifically this school, that have had brain tumors, breast cancer, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, all kinds of health problems. What have they done? Nothing. You don't care about the kids. I don't care who you are. You've never come out here on the sidewalk and stood with us and done a darn thing to stop this crap. All you've done is collected your paycheck and made sure that your little merry-go-round didn't stop turning. And that's wrong, folks. We got an evil, wicked situation going on here. We got kids that want to kill themselves at this school. Now, let's talk about the facts here, folks. Once again, the freshman class is failing. The majority of the freshman class at this school is failing their grades. The junior class, in a large percentage, is failing. We have the fruits of the labor of the district staff that has irradiated these kids and rolled Common Core in here as they remain silent on what was being done at the elementary level that we tried to stop for years, folks. And they sat back and they drank their diet joke and got drunk on the weekends and had their little happy parties and they ignored everything we said. And now this place is falling apart with kids that want to kill themselves in it. This place is a hellhole, ladies and gentlemen. Troy High School is a hellhole. Troy High School is a dangerous place for students. Troy High School is a school where at least two times in a row there were two concerted efforts to shoot up this school according to the threats that were deemed credible by the Fullerton Police Department. The Fullerton Police Department had two situations a year apart where there were credible threats to harm staff and students here. And why is that? Because these students can't take it. Because what they're being pushed through by these radical leftist wackos, that all they care about is the rankings of this school. All they care about is the test scores. When they don't want to take into consideration what is being done to the children before they get here. They're being destroyed in the Fullerton School District with the iPads. The iPads are a waste of hundreds of millions of dollars. They're sterilizing the children with dangerous microwave radiation. You can go to apple666.org and look that up. Now, we got a drug problem at Troy High School, a big one, because inside the walls of this prison system is an Adderall epidemic and a marijuana epidemic and a Oxycontin epidemic. The biggest drug of choice on this campus is Adderall. Why is not Mr. Monster, the school district principal, and the assistant principal, I don't know what their name is, why aren't they drug testing for Adderall at this place? Why? 
Why is the school on cocaine? Because that's basically what it is. It's a stimulant, folks. Adderall is like methamphetamine or cocaine. It's a stimulant. This school is drugged up, it's irradiated, and it's breaking, and it's depressed. And you got kids who want to kill themselves here. And if you talk to the seniors, they can't wait to get out of here. Let me tell you something, folks. When I was in high school, I loved high school. It was fun. Learning was fun. We had incandescent lights and clear windows and textbooks and teachers that loved us and cared about us with chalkboards. You know what we got here? A bunch of liberal psychopaths that have sat back and let these students get pushed to the brink and microwaved and vaccinated and brainwashed and broken. And all they care about is when their next raise and when their next day off is coming. Microwave weaponry is deployed in this school. That is affecting the cognitive function of these students. That is affecting their critical thinking skills. We have an epidemic at Troy High School of insomnia. Chronic insomnia is a direct result of chronic microwave exposure. Chronic microwave exposure results in insomnia, arrhythmia, all kinds of blood irregularities, fertility issues, behavioral issues, cognitive function, all kinds of problems. It is the last thing you want to bring into a school. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe Embriano. I'm coming to you outside of Troy High School in Fullerton, California to report on the latest developments that are taking place at this school. We talked for years about how not to bring these television sets into these kids' hands. And we said what a waste of money that would be. And they're destroying textbooks. They're throwing textbooks away and they're replacing them with iPads and Chromebooks in the elementary and the high schools. You cannot do that to children, folks. And what is happening now is you got kids walking around with TV sets everywhere. They're in. Well, Hilda Sugarman has a dream, ladies and gentlemen. Hilda Sugarman says, I have a dream that these children have iPads 24-7, ladies and gentlemen. That's quoted from her lips in the Orange County Register. Longtime board member on the Fullerton School District who is responsible for the destruction of the critical thinking skills of our students in Fullerton, California. And they may be your children. I can tell you that right now. But she sat on various committees, including a committee in Sacramento that was instrumental in bringing wireless technology into the Fullerton School District. She is also a signature to Project Inkwell, which is a consortium of business and various nonprofits and educational groups who has written policy guidelines and procedures to be implemented by school districts that demand that the last connection for broadband internet in the classrooms has to be wireless, folks. She is part of the agenda, ladies and gentlemen. She is a player in this agenda. So just to recap here, folks, we've got microwave weaponry destroyed in this, destroying these children in this school. It is deployed. Microwave weaponry is deployed in this school. That is affecting the cognitive function of these students. That is affecting their critical thinking skills. We have an epidemic at Troy High School of insomnia. Chronic insomnia is a direct result of chronic microwave exposure. Chronic microwave exposure results in insomnia, arrhythmia, all kinds of blood irregularities, fertility issues, behavioral issues, cognitive function, all kinds of problems. It is the last thing you want to bring into a school. We talked for years about how not to bring these television sets into these kids' hands. And we said what a waste of money that would be. And they're destroying textbooks. They're throwing textbooks away and they're replacing them with iPads and Chromebooks in the elementary and the high schools. You cannot do that to children, folks. And what is happening now is you got kids walking around with TV sets everywhere. They got telephones, they got computers, they got iPads. They never look at the sun, they never look at the sky. And we can't preview the curriculum anymore. And these school districts are snooping on the kids' internet browsing habits. They're invading the privacy of our homes. They're destroying our children, folks. Dr. Shapiro belongs in jail. Hilda Sugarman belongs in jail. Beverly Berryman belongs in jail. Who else belongs in jail? Bob Singer belongs in jail. Did I miss anybody? I mean, seriously? These people belong in prison. Dr. Shapiro? I wonder how long you'd live in prison. Hilda Sugarman? I wonder how long you would survive in prison. Beverly Berryman? I wonder how long you would survive in prison. I wonder how long Hilda Sugarman would make it without her makeup. I wonder how long Singer would survive without his medication. I wonder how long Shapiro would survive without his Jack Daniels. I wonder how long any of those people would survive if they were put where they belong for what they're doing to children, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very solemn moment out in front of Troy High School. We're here to bring to your attention that these children 
are in harm's way. And these children need your help. These children need to be rescued. This is Joan Briano, folks, coming to you out in front of Troy High School once again. And we hope that your child's not inside this place. And we hope that you don't send your kid here. And we hope they shut this place down before anyone gets hurt. Because a lot of kids are hurting inside here, folks. You got kids that are cracking. You got kids that are crying. You got kids that are breaking. You got kids that are suffering. You got children that are on migraine medication. You got children that are on sleeping medication. You got children here that are on depression medication. You want to know something, folks? They weren't on none of that before they got here. And now they are. What does that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? What does that tell you about this hellhole, Troy High School? This is John Briano, folks. Thanks for listening.